Hello and welcome back. Now in the previous video I looked at how you can simulate noise in electronic circuits using LD spies. And the problem with those simulations was that other than the case in which you are trying to make a dedicated noise generator, the noise will be so small that you can't really measure it with your standard equipment. Let me show you what I'm on about. So what I got here is a not so expensive oscilloscope and on the first channel I put in a 50 ohm termination resistor. So the only noise that we are seeing at the moment is the built-in noise of the oscilloscope. So I had it set to X1, no bandwidth limit, and we can see that we have a few hundred close to a millivolt of peak-to-peak -peak noise. The point is that if you want to make any sort of measurement at this level, so around the one millivolt level, the noise is so great that you won't really be able to. So if I add my oscilloscope probe to this, set it to X10, even if I do use a low noise connection with a spring, I still won't be able to measure much because of the built-in noise. So a problem arises. How do you measure signal levels below one millivolt with good accuracy? Well, you need some sort of low noise signal amplifier. And what I want to set out to do is build one of those without spending a fortune on new equipment. So if you're curious about how you can do that and much more, then keep watching. So let's start things off by understanding where we would actually encounter such very, very low noise signals that we are interested in measuring. Well, I came up with two major areas of application. First of all, in power supplies. So we all know that switching supplies are much more noisy than linear supplies. I mean, for the switching supply, the noise is in the order of tens or hundreds of millivolts. But in linear supplies, you have much less noise, which is sometimes very difficult to measure. But not all linear supplies are created equal. So you have noisier and less noisy supplies. So this is one place where having a method to measure very low signals is important. Another place in which you would be interested to do this is with audio equipment. So if you want to build an amplifier, you want to be able to measure how noisy it is. So for amplifiers, for digital to analog converters and so on, you are interested in having low noise circuitry. And to be able to measure the low noise, you need some sort of amplifier for this. Now, to actually start building, we need to know exactly what we want to build. And whenever I start some sort of electronic project and I'm not very sure on what I should do or how I should do it, I look for an application note. Because most likely, somebody else already had the problem that I'm trying to fix and even if their problem was somewhat different, there's quite a lot of insight in how they solved it. So an application note is a document usually made by some company to highlight their products, mostly to show off how good their products are and how to use them. But if the application note is done very well, it will also give you the theory of operation behind it. So you can learn quite a lot from that sort of application note. And let me point your attention to this application note I found. So this one is made by Linear Technology and it's about the noise of LDOs, a type of linear regulator. In particular, they're trying to highlight how good their products are, which have noise in the order of tens of microvolts. So this line of products. And one of the things they mention is that if you want to make this sort of measurement, so to measure the noise of a linear regulator, most of the noise content is between 10 hertz and 100 kilohertz. So you will see that this interval shows up in most data sheets. You won't really get noise measurements outside of this interval. And the way to measure it involves this sort of circuit. So they have a full schematic here. They have three op amps, an extra filter circuitry, and then they also provide a very nice block diagram for this. So you actually understand how and why they built this. Basically, this is a 60 decibel amplifier. It multiplies by 1000. 
So if you put in one microvolt, it will output one millivolt. And it's a fourth order high pass and a fourth order low pass filter. So we have three stages of high pass. So the first stage, second stage and third stage. These total up four orders. And then we have a fourth order low pass. And if we look into the circuit, we actually see these filters. So the high pass is built with our first input capacitor with the filter around amplifier A3 and then with the output capacitor. And then the fourth order low pass is built with this dedicated integrated circuit. So we're done. We found a circuit, we can build this and that will be good. Well, not so fast. First problem with the circuit is that the components needed to build this, so the free op amps and the filter circuit cost about 30 something dollars. So these are expensive components. Let's, let's keep reading. Let's see what else we find. So they give us some applications and so on. And then they give us a very nice picture of the setup they used. Now, mind you, this document was published in 2000. That's 20 years ago, but it's still not that long ago. And what you can see here is an antique oscilloscope from the 70s, an RMS voltmeter, probably from the same age, and a box of cookies. Not something you would call high-tech engineering. Now, if we look further, we see why they did this. So first of all, if you're trying to measure very, very small signals, you need to keep out any sort of noise. So you want just to measure your circuit, not outside interference. And that's what we can see in this picture. So the cookie box is there as a shielded enclosure. You can do this or you can buy a few thousand dollars proper enclosure, but this is good enough. And then they use battery supply for their circuit they're measuring, again, to keep the noise very low. So these are some very important things to consider when trying to make this sort of measurement. And then they go on to show you some performance, how their part is so much better than any other manufacturers and so on. So this is a great document. Now I found more things on this subject. So this is a later document, 2009, and this concerns not just linear regulators, but reference voltages. So just like the TL431, if you have a circuit built to give you a very stable reference voltage, you will want it to have little amounts of noise. And the thing that they're studying in this paper is how to measure the noise below 10 Hertz. So this paper no longer focuses on 10 Hertz to 100 kilohertz, but 0.1 Hertz up to 10 Hertz. And again, they give you a very nice block diagram. So they're talking about the circuit they're measuring. They have an 80 decibel amplifier this time, and then a filter and peak to peak noise detectors and so on. So again, you get a nice schematic, quite complicated. That includes your initial amplifier, peak to peak signal detector, and then other sorts of signal conditioning circuits. Now, one of the interesting things we see, if we look into how this thing was actually built, apart from them using a bottle cap, very important thing when building electronic circuits, is that again, they used battery power, again, they used some sort of cookie box to keep all the circuitry inside away from noise, and they used this ginormous capacitor, which they point out is tantalum capacitor of around 4,000 microfarads. And the reason why they did this is to have very low leakage currents and to have low noise. So one of the things they talk about in this paper is you should not use ceramic capacitors on the signal line. That is because ceramics are more noisy than electrolytic capacitors. Partly because ceramics also have the piezo effect. So any sort of mechanical vibration will be turned into an electrical signal. And there are of course other things in this application note, but I'll let you guys discover those. So the final paper I want to highlight, and then we can actually move on to do something, is this one. Again, an application note, again from linear technology. These guys did a lot of work on low noise measurements. So what they're trying to do here is again measure linear regulators. And this time they're using 
a far more complicated schematic. So just by looking at the block diagram, we can see that there's a lot going on here. So they have the amplifier split up into three pieces. They have a few high pass circuits. So these three in total have four orders. Then we will have another high pass at the end. So fifth order high pass and then fourth order low pass on two of the outputs. And then they output the signal in various frequency ranges. So they no longer have a strictly 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz range. So we have that one, but we also have a 10 hertz to 1 megahertz and then a wide band output. So if you want to measure more than 1 megahertz, but limited by the amplifiers that are used. And if we get to the schematic, we see this monstrosity. So this is quite a complicated circuit, but it's complicated for a reason. So let's start from the end. We have our fourth order 100 kilohertz filter built with A9 and A12. Then with A8 and A11, it's the one megahertz fourth order filter. A10 is just a buffer. So this is the output filter section. Then we have our intermediate amplifier. So A5, A6, A7. And then the part on the left, we see that it's quite repetitive. Basically, it's the same thing built four times and they go on to explain in the text that if you want to make a very low noise amplifier, one trick that you can use is take the same amplifier circuit, build it more times and the noise will decrease by the square root of how many amplifier stages there are. So what they did here is they built four amplifiers. So the noise was halved, square root of four is two. And then they also doubled the input stage and that provided some extra noise reduction. So this is a trick to get your amplifier to have lower and lower noise. Again, they point out that they're using tantalum capacitors for the signal path, especially on the input side, but the last capacitor on the output is ceramic. So here the signal is so large that you no longer care. And again, we see the famous cookie box. So this is a Christmas cookie box this time, very important detail. And here we can see how they actually built it. So to keep the noise very, very low, they didn't just use one metallic box, they used three. So this is quite an interesting concept on how to keep the noise very, very low. And then of course you can see it's the board and all the batteries inside. So again, to keep noise very, very small. And here we can see the actual setup. Now, this picture is amazing. So if you would see this somewhere on the internet, you would see that some crazy people built some sort of circuit and they had no idea what they're doing. But this was made by the engineers at Linear Technologies. Now these are world renowned experts. And basically to highlight how great their products are, how very low noise they're generating, they threw together a state of the art oscilloscope. So that's the most expensive part here some antique voltmeter. So this is the same type of RMS voltmeter that was in the first research paper, some lead acid battery, I think, and a box of cookies. So this just goes to show you that high tech engineering doesn't mean having the latest, greatest things. It means being creative and being resourceful. And then they go on to show you how the circuit behaves and some other types of measurements that you can perform. So not just the output noise, but also the ripple rejection. And finally, they provide a version of the circuit that has differential input. So in case you're interested in this sort of application, you can either build the differential version or the single ended version. Now there's far more information in these documents and there's other documents like these out there. But I think for now we have a clear picture of what we should be building. So what a good signal amplifier should look like. Basically 10 Hertz to 100 kilohertz bandwidth is sufficient. So this will both cover applications in power supplies, but also audio equipment. The bandwidth should be clearly defined by fourth order filters. So both high pass and low pass. The thing should be battery powered to limit the noise coming from the power supply stage. And it should have a limited use of ceramic capacitors, especially on the input signal side since ceramic capacitors are noisy. 
and everything should be put into a metallic enclosure. So a cookie box or other similar thing. But I think that's enough for now. We will start working on this thing next time. So let me know what you think, if these parameters are okay, if it should have other characteristics. But for now, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.